Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme So now uh, we will look at how a second order system reacts uh, to a, a simple disturbance like a step input and uh, that will also help us uh, classify these second order dynamical systems and we will see why that classification comes about and how it is related to the parameters of a second order dynamical system. So we will now look at a step response for second order dynamical system. So we will work with a general transfer function of a second order system which is kp over tau square s square plus twice zeta tau s plus 1 which is equal to y s over u s. And we are looking at step response. So the transfer function of the input is going to be A over S, where A is the step size. So you can write that the Laplace of output Y is going to be GS times US, which will be AKP over S tau square s square plus twice zeta tau s plus 1 and in order to fraction this denominator we will also divide everywhere numerator and denominator by tau square. So we have a k p over tau square s s square plus twice zeta over tau s plus 1 over tau square. Now in order to get the response of yt uh, from this uh, Laplace transform uh, we have we will be using the method of partial fractions. So for that we will have to decompose uh, this second this term into its uh, factors. So to do that uh, what we would be doing is uh, we will be writing this as Ys is equal to a k p over tau square s s minus p1 s minus p2 and this p12 will be given by the factors of this particular polynomial uh, which uh, would be minus zeta over tau. So we will be writing minus b plus minus root beta square minus 4 a c over 2. So the 2 p 1 2 can be given by minus zeta over tau plus minus root of zeta square minus 1 over tau. So now you can see that uh, we can have three possibilities here. Possibility 1 is if zeta is going to be greater than 1. In that case uh, what we will have is uh, this term uh, will be less than the first term and in that case uh, we will have two distinct roots which will be real. 
So the partial fraction uh, would be 1 over s, uh, sorry, the partial fraction would be a over s plus b over s minus p1 plus c over s minus p2. So there will be three different exponential, one constant term, one e raised to p1 and other p e raised to p2 terms. When we look at zeta equal to 1, however, uh, in that case uh, this term will go away and all our both the roots are identical. So in that case uh, we cannot directly write uh, as a over s plus b over p1 plus c over p2, uh, we will have to use the square term as well and in that case uh, the response uh, would have, so if I write down uh, the type of responses we are going to get, uh, here we will have a constant e raised to p1 t and e raised to p2 t. In this case uh, what we will have is a constant e raised to power p1 t and t e raised to p1 t. So these will be sort of different types of dynamics, slightly different dynamics and then uh, the last case is if zeta is less than 1. In that case, uh, this will be square root of a negative term. So what we will have is a complex conjugate root. So this is going to give rise to sinusoids. So depending on the value of zeta, uh, we may have simple constant and exponents, we may have constant exponent and uh, some time multiplied by exponent or we can even have sinusoids. So this damping coefficient essentially gives different sorts of dynamics depending on its value compared to 1 and this kind of gives uh, the classification of a second order dynamical system. So depending on value of zeta to be greater than 1, equal to 1 or less than 1. We have three different types of second order dynamical systems and uh, we will be discussing these further after a short break. Thank you. Hello students, welcome back. We are looking at a response of a second order system to a step input and based on that uh, we will be getting the classification of second order systems. So the, so the transfer function for the second order system in a generic form is kp over tau square s square plus twice zeta tau s plus 1 which is equal to ys over us and as we are talking about a step response our us will be equal to a over s. So accordingly, uh, we will get the Laplace form of the output response as a k p over tau square s square plus twice zeta tau s plus 1 and we will try to write it in the form a k p times 1 over tau square s square plus twice zeta over tau s plus 1 wherein we can so this y s will be s so that uh, we can write it or expand it in terms of partial fractions as some constant a over s plus b over s minus p1 plus c over s minus p2 wherein p1 and p2 are the roots of this equation s square plus twice d over tau s plus 1 and we had seen last time that depending on the nature of these roots uh, we will get different types of dynamics. So let us consider the first case when we have zeta greater than 1. So in that case you will get real and distinct roots 
where this p12 are equal to minus zeta over tau plus minus root zeta square minus 1 over tau. So, in that case uh, what we get as ys as a k p a over s plus b over s minus p1 plus c over s minus p2. This will be equal to a k p 1 over tau square over the same denominator which we had earlier s s square plus twice zeta over tau s plus 1. So, we can use method of partial fractions uh, to obtain the values of a, b and c. So, for this system what we get is a equal to 1, b will be equal to 1 over 2 root zeta square minus 1 root of zeta square minus 1 minus zeta and c similarly will be equal to 1 over 2 root zeta square minus 1 root of zeta square minus 1 plus zeta. So, accordingly uh, when we substitute these uh, we are going to get the response of the form. So, when we take inverse Laplace we will get y of t is equal to a k p and then inverse of 1 over s will be a constant 1 and then we will get b times e raise to p 1 t plus c times e raise to p 2 t. Now, here uh, we can do a lot of uh, algebraic manipulations uh, arrange rearrangements and then eventually uh, we can simplify this system. So, I will skip few steps uh, and uh, I can show you that the response would look like 1 plus we can write uh, these terms 1 over 2 root zeta square minus 1 root of zeta square minus 1 minus zeta times e raise to power minus zeta over tau plus root of zeta square minus 1 over tau t plus 1 over 2 root zeta square minus 1 root of zeta square minus 1 plus zeta times e raise to power minus zeta over tau minus root of zeta square minus 1 over tau t. So, I will not show each and every step of this uh, simplification, but I will give you some guidelines about how you can proceed. The first thing is you can take this term common. Uh, the next step would be uh, we will be expanding these as e raise to minus zeta t over tau and e raise times e raise to root of zeta square minus 1 t over tau. Similarly, we can expand this as e raise to minus zeta t over tau divided by e raise to root zeta square minus 1 t over tau. And then again uh, you can notice that these terms will be common. So, we can take uh, these uh, common as well. So, we will be left with uh, these term uh, with uh, this in the denominator and we will be leaving with this term with this in the denominator and then later on we can just do the addition. It will be a minus b a plus b. Uh, so, denominator again will be zeta square minus 1 minus zeta square. So, again it the denominator of the resulting addition will be minus 1. So, this plus would go become minus 1. So, once you do all these uh, simplifications, uh, what you would end up with uh, will be y of t is equal to a k p 1 minus e raise to minus zeta t over tau over 2 root zeta square minus 1 
we will be left with this and again uh, what we can notice now is uh, which uh, we can now simplify again as y t is equal to a k p 1 minus e raise to minus zeta t over tau and we will take the remaining thing inside. So, in this case uh, you can observe uh, that we have this root of zeta square minus 1 common in both the sides and then it will get cancelled with 3 root of zeta square minus 1. So, what we would eventually left with will be e raise to power root zeta square minus 1 t over tau plus e raise to minus root zeta square minus 1 t over tau over 2. And similarly for the other case uh, what we would have is zeta over root of zeta square minus 1 and then it will be the other term which will be e raise to root of zeta square minus 1 t over tau minus e raise to minus root of zeta square minus 1 t over tau and this will be divided by 2. Which we can uh, note that uh, this will be a cosine hyperbolic form and this other thing is sine hyperbolic. So, the final response uh, of this system uh, will be given as y t is equal to a k p 1 minus e raise to minus zeta t over tau cosine hyperbolic of root of zeta square minus 1 t over tau plus zeta over root of zeta square minus 1 sine hyperbolic of the same term zeta square minus 1 t over tau. So, you can note that uh, the response of a second order system uh, when zeta is greater than 1 uh, would be given by this term uh, which has uh, a the overall multiplication factor of a k p and uh, you can very well appreciate that uh, that a k p would uh, eventually lead you to the final value of the response. So, when t goes to infinity uh, this entire term will go to 1 or this. So, this entire term will vanish. So, as t tends to infinity this entire term would go to 0 because there is a decaying exponential this is I am talking about uh, the case when zeta is indeed greater than 0 and uh, the final value of the response uh, would then be given by a k p. Uh, I would uh, show the response of this system uh, in a in some time when we have looked at all the other uh, criteria uh, in terms of the values of zeta. Uh, so, for now uh, this is the response uh, when we have zeta greater than 1 which is also known as an overdamped response and uh, I would also show you uh, why it is called as overdamped response when we looked at the other two cases as well. So, the second case uh, is when zeta is indeed equal to 1 uh, in that case uh, we get a real and identical roots. which will be p 1 2 will be equal to minus 1 over tau. So, in this case uh, as we have a double root uh, we will have to use a slightly different version of partial fractions. So, what we would be writing as y of s will be a k p which uh, we have is uh, 1 over tau square s square plus 2 over tau s plus 1 over tau square. Uh, this is uh, we are going to write as a k p constant a over s plus b over s minus p plus the double root which is s minus p square. Uh, 
So in this case, uh, uh, when we use partial fractions, uh, what you are going to end up with is A equal to 1, uh, B will come out to be equal to minus 1 and C will come out to be minus 1 over tau. So, when we substitute this, uh, we will get Y s is equal to A k p 1 over s minus 1 over s plus 1 over tau minus 1 over tau s plus 1 over tau square. And now we can take a Laplace inverse for this. to get y of t which will be a k p uh, Laplace inverse of 1 over s uh, would be a constant 1 and then Laplace uh, inverse of 1 over s plus uh, 1 over tau uh, will be an exponential term to so minus e raised to minus t over tau and the last term is uh, minus uh, 1 over tau uh, 1 over s plus 1 over tau square. So, it is like uh, the inverse of that uh, will be so t times e raised to minus t over tau, uh, which we can condense and write as a k p 1 minus e raised to minus t over tau 1 plus t over tau. So, you can see that the form of the response is uh, similar to uh, the response uh, for the case when zeta was greater than 1. Uh, so, this is for zeta equal to 1. So, we have still the first ultimate value as a k p. So, even this response uh, the final value of the risk uh, will reach a k p. Uh, we have 1 minus e raised to uh, a decaying exponential term e raised to minus t over tau followed by a term which is a little bit simpler in this case uh, there are no cosine hyperbolic or sine functions we have a simple uh, linear function as 1 over t plus tau. So, this is the case when zeta is equal to 1 uh, which we also call as critically damped and we are one step from coming to the origin of these terms as over damped or critically damped and we will consider the last case uh, when zeta is indeed less than 1. So, in that case uh, what we have is complex conjugate roots so we have y s as a k p 1 over tau square s square plus twice zeta over tau s plus 1 over tau square this we are going to write in this case as a k p a over s plus B s plus C over S square plus twice zeta over tau S plus 1 over tau square. So, for this case um, the method of partial fractions uh, would give us A will be equal to 1, B will come out to be minus 1 and C will come out to be minus twice zeta over tau. So, substituting these values uh, what we are going to get is y of s is a k p 1 over s minus s plus 2 zeta over tau over s square plus twice zeta over tau s plus 1 over tau square. Now, again uh, I will not uh, show you all the steps of this derivation, uh, but what we are going to write is we are going to write this as s plus a square plus b square. So, we will write it as denominator as s plus zeta over tau square plus root of 1 minus zeta over tau square and the numerator uh, we will try to write it as, so this is for the denominator 
and the numerator will split as s plus zeta over tau which is similar to this and uh, we, the other term uh, we will try to write in terms of this uh, root of zeta 1 minus zeta square over tau. So, that we will write as plus this remaining zeta over tau uh, we will write as zeta over root of 1 minus zeta square times root of 1 minus zeta square over tau. So, the idea is uh, we are going to get one factor which is same as this and the other factor which will give me this. So, based on this uh, the way we will uh, write this entire expression as y s is equal to a k p 1 over s minus s plus zeta over tau over s plus zeta over tau square plus root of 1 minus zeta square over tau minus zeta over root of 1 minus zeta square root of 1 minus zeta square over tau s plus zeta over tau square plus root of 1 minus zeta over tau square. So, essentially what we have written it as s plus a over s plus a square plus omega square and this we have written as omega over s plus a square plus omega square. So, this is going to give us So, the inverse of this uh, would be of the form e raise to minus zeta t over tau cosine of root of 1 minus zeta square t over tau and inverse of this term uh, is going to give me e raise to minus zeta t over tau sin of the same angle 1 minus zeta square t over tau. So, now we know inverses of each of these terms. Uh, so, we can finally write uh, take the inverse Laplace y of t uh, would equal, be equal to a k p 1 minus e raise to minus zeta t over tau which we are going to take common we will have cosine of root of 1 minus zeta square t over tau plus zeta over root of 1 minus zeta square sin of root 1 minus zeta square t over tau which we can uh, further simplify as a k p 1 minus e raise to minus zeta t over tau and we will take uh, this 1 minus zeta square out. So, what we are going to have is root of 1 minus zeta square cosine of this angle plus zeta into sine of this angle, where I am simply writing this as star. And at this point, uh, what we would uh, try to say is uh, we will take some angle phi and we will say as zeta is less than 1 uh, root of 1 minus zeta square is also less than 1. So, we will call it a sine of some angle phi and this zeta we will call as the cosine of the same angle phi and this definition of sine and cosine is possible as long as uh, we satisfy the identity sin square phi plus cos square phi equal to 1 which indeed is satisfied here. So, that phi is equal to tan inverse of root of 1 minus zeta square over zeta. So, this becomes sin a cos b plus cos a sin b so which uh, ultimately uh, the final form of the response will be sin of a plus b and uh, the final response uh, we are going to get out of this is y t is a k p. You will notice that it also has a similar form of a k p 
e raised to minus zeta t over tau root of 1 minus zeta square sin of root of 1 minus zeta square t over tau plus phi. So, this is the response of the system second order system when zeta is less than 1 for a unit step change. And now here uh, you can see that uh, we have uh, the ultimate value which is a k p, uh, we have this constant, uh, we also have an exponential decaying function, but what makes this response interesting is the presence of a periodic function, a sinusoid. So, we are going to have oscillations inside this system. So, that is essentially a, a characteristic of a second order or even higher order system which was not at all present in a first order system. So, this second order system can oscillate even though input does not oscillate. So, this was not possible in a first order system. When we talked about a first order system, uh, if we give a sinusoidal input, you will get sinusoidal at the output. So, if you oscillate the input, the output will oscillate, but when the input was constant, then the output would never oscillate, not the case with the second order system. So, when zeta is less than 1, even though we have made a step change, uh, the output is going to oscillate and uh, what we would actually see is, so when we say this coefficient is equal to 0, in that case uh, we will get the response uh, which is of the form y t is equal to a k p 1 minus sin of t over tau plus phi uh, which in this case uh, will be 0 which in this case uh, will be infinity or pi by 2, tan will be infinity. So, what we are going to see is sustained oscillation. So, the output is a pure uh, sinusoidal uh, and then uh, it is continuously oscillate uh, with this uh, radian frequency of 1 over tau and as uh, we start adding or increasing value of zeta, these oscillations would reduce or decay in time because we are going to add contribution to this uh, decay factor of e raised to minus zeta t over tau which multiplies the sinusoid. So, as zeta keeps on increasing from 0, uh, the contribution of this, so the contribution of the sinusoid will keep on reducing and uh, this will happen uh, till uh, we have uh, zeta equal to 1. So, in that case there are no oscillations. We had seen this case uh, when zeta was equal to 1, the response did not contain any sinusoid. It was a pure uh, linear function in that uh, curly bracket. So, what we are going to see is as we are increasing the value of this uh, parameter zeta, we are going to dampen the oscillations. So, that is why uh, this zeta was also is also known as a damping coefficient. So, it is damping the oscillations uh, and that the genesis of this name uh, damping coefficient and uh, this damping is 0 uh, when we do not have any value to this. Uh, so, when the value is 0, uh, there is no damping to the oscillation, we get sustained oscillations and as we start increasing the value from 0 to 1, we are progressively uh, going to dampen these oscillations, but this damping is not complete. So, not complete damping of oscillation. when we are between 0 to 1 that is why it is known as under damping. When we reach the value of 1, uh, the all the oscillations that is the minimum value of zeta which is required to dampen all the oscillations that is why this case is known as critically damped.
and uh, lastly uh, when we go for a value greater than 1 in that case uh, there are no oscillations to dampen so we have already dampened all the oscillations we are unnecessarily over damping the system uh, that is why uh, when zeta is greater than 1 we call it as an over damped system. So that is the genesis of uh, the name damping coefficient and also the classification of the second order systems based on the value of this damping coefficient. If the value is between 0 and 1 we call it as an under damped system, when the value is equal to 1 we call it a critically damped system and when the value is greater than 1 we call it as over damped system. So we will take a short uh, pause here and after that we will try to look at uh, the example of that manometer and how it performs uh, under these different cases of damping coefficient and as well as we will look at some of the characteristics of this second order response. Thank you.